This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 894 of Horse Tip Daily. A different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Greetings, horse people. Coach Jen here, and thanks for tuning in to Horse Tip Daily. Today's tip is an excerpt from the Horse.com's weekly horse health report on horses in the morning. The Hit'em crew is joined by the Horse.com digital editor Christy West and Dr. Jones to talk about regenerative medicine, along with a co-host quiz afterwards. How will Glenn fare? We'll find out right after this from EquestrianCollections.com. Hi, Glenn here with the Horse Radio Network, and I am with Debbie from Equestrian Collections with Equestrian Collections Product of the Week. As your listeners know, I love half chaps, but I have come across some really super, super ones. They're the Treadstep Liberty Half Chaps. They come in two forms. They come in a side zip and a back zip. The back zip is so it looks even more like a tall boot. The side zip is because it's a little more convenient and maybe a little bit easier to to zip up. Uh, The way these things work is that part of it is the full grain leather. It looks just like a tall boot. And then the inside is sort of a stretchy suede so that this thing molds to your foot. Now, I will tell you with all the Treadstep products, uh, which are absolutely phenomenal products. Treadstep expects these to feel tight. When you put these on, in fact, they tell you the first couple times you put tall boots or half chaps on, you should have a helper because it will be that tight as you zip yourself into them. But after about the first two, maybe three times, they will have molded to your leg or foot and you can zip them up yourself and they will just look fabulous. I wore these uh, on a trail ride and I absolutely love them. Um, They're not summer chaps, so this is the time of year to be looking to get something like this um, that you can wear all the time, schooling or wherever you would wear a half chap, um, and have it look like a tall boot. These things, I, I can't even tell you how wonderful they are. And the sizes are very, very, um, they fit a lot of different people. And you can take a look. There's a ton of sizes. They go all the way up to a 17-inch calf uh, with a 16, you know, uh, it's, they're just just amazing. So. Now, I do have a question. A lot, of, a lot of the complaints I've had with half chaps over the years, not, not tread step, but with half chaps in general, is they have crappy cheap zippers. So what a... What you know... A, when we had we when I first put this thing on and and they were here and showed us these chaps, um, I said the same thing because as they were saying, oh, you know, you need two people to zip them up, and I'm like, oh my gosh, the zipper's going to go, the zipper's going to go. These are fabulous zippers. It took two people to get me in it the first time, and I kept <laughs> thinking this zipper's going to break. Did not break. It's absolutely the the the, the it's well you know these these uh, they are not inexpensive they're 120 dollars 119.95 but everything in here is quality so don't worry about the zippers um on the tread step half chaps or boots or anything like that they they have top of the line very good and you can find it by going to equestriancollections.com and searching for tread step liberty half chaps and they'll pop up and of course this is a terrific terrific Christmas gift idea as well. It is, and especially look at these sizes because it's not it's not easy to find this quality half chaps in some of the sizes that they that they offer. Questioncollections.com But that's not what we're talking about. We're actually talking about something with horse.com today and we have Dr. Jones on there. Hello Dr. Jones. Good morning everyone. We can always tell when you're on because it sounds like you're under a horse or something. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I am at the clinic, so, yeah, there's a possibility of that. (laughs) (laughs) Now, we're talking about something I know nothing about, and I don't even know what it is, really. So I don't think it's going to be too gross, so I'll leave today. That's the first thing I was going to ask you is what she thought it was. I have no idea. It's regenerative medicine, and that doesn't say reproductive, so I just have no idea. (laughs) <laughs> kind of lost on this one. Is this kind of like stem cell stuff? Yes, sir, it is. As a matter of fact, oh. it is. Very oh, good cool. start. Um, 
Hold on. Don't take credit for that, Glenn, because I did have to tell him I think it's about stem cells before the show. So he did not come up with that himself. Uh-huh. I see. Trying to take credit. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw you out, Glenn. All right. Now we know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, no. Aaron. Let's, let's tell him what it really is. It's not just stem cell. There are other things as well. Right. There's some. Um, it's you know, the new wave and the new medicine that veterinarians and human world are attempting to treat uh, diseases and problems in, in people and horses and dogs and cats. There's stem cell, there's IRAP, and there's PRP. PRP we were hearing about many, many years ago, and stem cells a little bit too. Um, but what they are is PRP is the initials for plasma-rich protein, and IRAP is interleukin receptor antagonist protein. I know that's a mouthful. And uh, the stem cell is, of course, their adult stem cell embryonic. We're not killing baby foals. Um, we, these are from adults, meaning anything that's alive and born, um, that they are pulling cells that can become just about anything. They can become cartilage. They can become bone. They can become tendon. They can become ligament. It's um, just adult stem cells that have an ability to become something different. Uh, they're at their very early stages of life and uh, have not decided who they want to be when they grow up. Okay. <laughs> and now, what is it advanced? See, I don't. I didn't think I knew that it was advanced enough that they're actually using it in everyday medicine with horses. Are they? I just did two of them yesterday. If you want to call it everyday medicine, I'm a general practitioner, and uh, I actually harvested is what it's called. Harvested, just like you would harvest the wheat in the field. Harvested um, fat derived stem cells yesterday, and they went off in a little shipping package to the company for them to process those stem cells out of there for me and send me back two nice little syringes, one for each horse to inject into a core lesion of their ligaments. And what will that do for these horses? This is a perfect case study. Sorry about this, Christy. I hijacked it. But no, go for it. These horses have ligament damage. They each have a core lesion. In fact, it's the same leg and same ligament. And they will have the stem cells put right in the center of the core lesion so it doesn't scar in with scar tissue because that's how the horse's ligaments heal. It will actually regenerate new ligament cells in order to make it a stronger and better healing. How long will that take? It's a horse dependent and size of the lesion dependent. But uh, we've said in the past six to 12 months of hand walking, um, rehab, shockwave, maybe riding at a walk, ponying the horse, things like that for your average doing um, rehab on the horse to bring them back from a ligament or a tendon injury. Now we're saying it's much shorter. Six months is probably the longest unless they're, it's a really bad tear um, for them to come back to work. So you're getting a quicker heal with better cells. You know, this is, we were talking about me sitting in Captain Kirk's chair and this is sort of <laughs> like we they used here. to do in Star Trek with the little thingy to, to make it all get better. Exactly, exactly. It really is. And the the idea behind healing healing something that, that generates, you know, I'll, I'll say original type of, of, of tissue is that the scar tissue that forms when something heals, it's, it's just like a lot, you know, a scar you might see on your skin. A lot of time that scar will draw down a little bit. It'll be a little bit tighter, and it's, a little, it's more prone to re-injury. So if you're able to actually regenerate a proper proper tendon and ligament tissue, then that's going to be a lot less less likely to become re-injured later. The other thing you want to think about is it's the, the, the horse's own cells trying to heal itself. Now, PRP and IRAP is the same idea. They're not cells, they're proteins, and there's proteins that are in their blood. PRP and IRAP is the process, and, and I can go through that process real quick. It's a process of taking blood from the horse, in IRAP, they have a syringe, and a very famous orthopedic surgeon, uh, equine orthopedic surgeon, says there's little magic beads in there. I won't say his name, Dr. Bramlage. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, you incubate that syringe that has these magic beads in them and for 24 hours. Then you spin down the blood, and you only draw off the proteins off the top, and you use those to inject the lesions. And uh, that actually decreases the inflammatory response. Uh, the PRP is you collect the blood from the horse and a, a syringe as well. Uh, it doesn't have magic beads, though. And you spin it down and you drop the proteins off the top. And you can do that one stall side. There's no 24-hour wait. And inject it into the lesion. And it's the proteins 
uh, fighting against the inflammation of its own body. It's just a concentrated amount of proteins where we do have those floating through our body, and that's what dumps into any site that gets injured to fight the anti-inflammatory side of it. But the, um, this way we can concentrate them, get more power punch in one area that's needed or necessary to help fight the inflammation. So IREP and PRP we were using for quite some time for tendons and lig ligaments, also in joints. And now they're using them in conjunction with stem cells a lot of times to calm down the inflammation and then let the stem cells do their job of creating. Okay. I, uh, when I was a, t a technician, a vet tech for one of the clinics around here, I would have to go and draw blood out of a donor horse, go spin it down, and we would use it as eye medication. And you would t spin off the protein, pull the proteins off the top, and then that would be something you would put into the horse's eye. And I never knew why, and I was always scared to ask, so I just learned that it fights inflammation. It also has a fibrin um, component to it for the eye, so there's a little bit difference in that because that's full serum as opposed to just concentrated p proteins, and that fibrin makes a nice little matrix on the corneal ulcer for the horse um, to start recreating another uh, epithelial layer. Okay, gotcha. I just remember having to draw the blood, yeah. and I was never really good at um, putting, like I would use a syringe, draw the blood out, and then um, put it into the little tubes. And the little tubes, I was never really good at when I would draw the little tube out, the suction was still going, and so it would spray blood all over me. So I by the time, awesome. by the time I was done drawing blood from a donor horse, I looked like I was a murder victim. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Covered in blood. Not the best technician, but I learned a lot. Now I'm learning more. Thank you very much. Carry on. <laughs> and the owners so really love it when you walk their horses back looking like that, right? Oh, my God. Then you go into 7-Eleven to get a uh, Coke or something like that, and uh, people are wondering who you butchered down the road. Right. Exactly. Oh, we're just butchering, you know, sheep. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm covered in blood. All of my arms, on my hair, on my face. I mean, it was just terrible. And I would come home, and Chad would be like, Oh my God! Don't come near me. You're disgusting. Go get in the shower. <laughs> Take off your clothes outside. <laughs> so he had already gotten past the point of is any of that yours? Yeah, no, he, he knew better. <laughs> yeah, or awesome. he didn't want to ask. I don't know. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Aaron, we talked a little bit about a little bit about eyes and, and tendons. Um, tell us a little bit about what kind of injuries you tend to treat with this. Primarily, I've done tendons, ligaments, and joints, and actually bone cysts um, within the bone itself. It's also used in fracture repair, too. So I'm sure the surgeons are using it um, when they're going in to do fracture repair. They're injecting in and around the fracture to help um, regenerate that a little bit faster as well. Um, they are looking in small animal more than they are in horses for, you know, organ issues, liver disease, kidney disease, uh, lung, things like that. Uh, but we primarily use it for sports medicine in the horses. Right. Very good. And you can get, um, looking specifically at stem cell for a moment, you can get those stem cells either from uh, from bone marrow or from fat tissue, correct? Yes. Those are our primary areas of, of pulling them. Um, both are easy to access. Um, I don't do the bone marrow one necessarily. That definitely requires a trip to my clinic or a clinic. You want to nice, um, sterile, and controlled environment for something like that. Uh, the fat ones you could do on-site at the farm type thing, and there's just, there's just always a pocket of fat you can find in a horse. So <laughs> right. um, for me, that's just um, an easier one to take. Now, there are those that feel fat-derived is better, and there's those that feel that bone marrow is better, but there's no uh, scientific studies. One is better than the other um, at this point. Okay, so where on the horse do you tend to harvest this? I'm sure I'm sure Glenn wants to know. Yes, I was curious actually. <laughs> well, let's see. Let's 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 throw this out to where is when you're doing your fat scale of one to nine, your body condition um, score for your horse. Where does the fat deposit on those horses that tend to be nines that are having metabolic issues that shouldn't be so fat? There's three. Uh, are you ask, you're, you're asking me where they are. Yeah. Uh, okay, the top of the neck. Crusty neck, the yeah. The crusty neck, the butt, and on the top, I mean, I would say the top of the back. Well, behind the, the shoulder, there's a little pocket of fat right behind the shoulder yeah. blade. So, yeah, very okay. good, very good. Well, on the butt means right around the tail head, and that's where we harvest it from. 
So you make it just a about? small incision, and we just pull fat from around the tailhead. I would be How happy much? to volunteer some fat. <laughs> 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 you want to just go ahead and just nick at my love handles. Go ahead and suck out as much was, as you want. You're free to use that. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> my, fat dual benefit. Deposit, my fat <laughs> deposits are in similar places. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have for a those, grossy neck, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> For those that are interested, I do want to throw out that they are starting to bank uh, cord blood for foals, and there are some people that are taking them up on it. There's only a few places that do it, and I do not know those off the top of my head. I have them listed because uh, I did have a client ask me about six years ago if they could bank cord blood off of their foal that was going to foal, and I said, no, we don't do that. I know they do it in the human world, but we don't do it in horses, but they are doing it now, uh, whether they've used those. Uh, embryonic cells from the cord blood or not, I don't um, know of anybody who's done that yet. All right, so I have a question on that now. We're getting gross anyway. Who cares? Um, so <laughs> do you that. take that as a vet if you're delivering the baby right there, or do you actually send the whole thing off? You can take that as a vet in um, certain package that they send you, okay. or uh, they can just store it and send the whole thing off as well. Uh, it would be, I want to say it's the one place is in California, and I'm not sure if it's uh, associated with uh, UC Davis vet school or not, but that vet school is working with the human side of regenerative medicine, trying to make a big bank area of regenerative cells. Huh. And how expensive, like with the one you're doing right now that you did yesterday, uh, so what will that run those people from the time you went there yesterday, you took, you took the uh, sample and then you sent it off to get it processed and you're going to come back and you're going to stick them with another needle. What will all that run? Well, you do ultrasound guided to make sure you're getting into the core of the core lesion of the uh, ligament. And uh, you have to do it under sedation. You don't want the horse jumping all around because all you get is one syringe to use. You don't want to drop it on the ground. So they're looking at easily over $2,500 to get the whole thing done. And the biggest expense is the harvesting and processing. Okay. The actual injections are very minimal. It's like your typical injections that you would do for cortisone or any other, you know, PRP type injections, that kind of thing. And of course, PRP is um, cheaper and PEP is cheaper. Um, a lot of times I've had clients do the PRP with a stem cell injection. I've not done IRAP with a stem cell injection personally. I know some vets who have, but I've done a PRP injection with stem cells, and that just increases the price. Not by much, really. Okay. Cool. Very, very and cool. I'm going to ask you one other question, and then we'll have to let you guys go. Is the results? Are you seeing results that you would go, it's worth 2500 bucks. Clinically, that's about all we could tell you. Do we see results or not? I'm a big believer, and I'm seeing some great results with it. They do have some studies out there, but they can't. If you think about scientific studies that people do, that they, especially like FDA has to do on drugs, and this is not a drug. It's, this is a process in the service. Um, they'll have to take control horses that with the same injury and do hand walking, and they'd have to take another set of horses with the same injury and do the injection with the stem cells, either fat-derived or bone marrow, and do the same amount of time and see who right. gets better faster type thing. That's a very expensive study and has yet to be done. There are some smaller studies they've done to show that the um, fat-derived and the bone marrow-derived stem cells are working well and, and quite nicely. So clinically is what I'll tell you right now, we're seeing some great results. Okay. Cool. Very and good. I want to let you know, too, that there's obviously, um, as usual, more information on this on thehorse.com. You can get on there and either search for regenerative medicine or stem cell therapy, if that's more what you're interested in, or IRAP or PRP. So there's uh, veterinarians are still holding a number of conferences about it to learn more about it and disseminate the information that they are learning. So we've, we've got quite a bit of that on, on thehorse.com. i got to thank you, too. You do a terrific job of coming on here and making things simple. Um, oh, and that's you know, and that's so hard to do when you're a veterinarian or when you're talking about some of these topics, but you do a great job. And I, I just wanted to thank you and tell you that it's appreciated, and I'm sure that people are learning a ton. Well, well super. Thank you for my, giving us the opportunity. Yeah, my Go pleasure. <laughs> Good I don't job. know you're not used to me complimenting you. I'm usually just throwing up. But today <laughs> wasn't too bad, so I could get it in today. See, that was how I got it in. That's the horse.com and, and it is uh, Florida Equine, Florida spelled out, FloridaEquine.com. I hope it's done by the end of this week or else. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you next week. Take care. Thank you. Take All care. Right. Bye. Bye. Well, there you go. 
To listen to more of the Horse.com's tips, just go to horsetipdaily.com and go to the Experts drop-down menu on the left. If you love listening to the Horses in the Morning gang, putting in their two cents on all things horse, you can tune in every weekday morning at horsesinthemorning.com for fascinating interviews, news stories from around the world, clever contests, and general horsey hijinks. And you can now have all of your Horse Radio Network shows with you wherever you go with our new free app for iPhone and Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Download it today. It's quick, it's free, and it's easy. And don't forget to support our sponsors here on Horse Tip Daily because they do make these podcasts possible. Today's podcast has been brought to you by EquestrianCollections.com. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. (laughs) 